right, here we go, here we go, day six. Almost done with the last unit. Oh my god, it's so exciting. Nothing, okay, Mr. Key is here to help you out. Let me get to my red pen. All right, today we're going to talk about day six, theoretical probability and notes. Not too difficult, not too crazy, not too awful. Just a little weird. Let's talk about some tangs. Find the exact, the exact theoretical probability. Not like if you ran an experiment over and over and over again. What would, in theory, it be? Like, for example, if you flip a coin, the probability of getting a tails is one half. Probability of getting heads is one half. Could you flip a coin four times and get heads four times in a row? Sure. But eventually, that theory of large numbers, or whatever it's called, would say, over time, the theoretical probability is one half. Even though I could do it four or five times in a row and accidentally get heads every time, if I do it over a large sample or a large number of trials, uh, it would be one half. So what's the probability of choosing a queen out of a standard deck of cards? Well, since there are four queens and 52 cards, then the answer is 4 out of 52. That's not really working very well. I'm not very good with 4s. Find the probability of rolling a number less than 3 on a fair die. Well, there's only two numbers less than 3 on a fair die. That would be a 1 and a 2. So that would be 2 out of 6 or 1 third. I don't really care which you choose. The probability of choosing a spade out of a standard deck of cards. Well, there are actually 13 spades and 52 cards. So I could write 13 out of 52. Most people would probably write, oh, it's about a fourth. Not even about. It's exactly a fourth because it's one fourth of the deck. The probability of choosing a vowel, not a Y, out of all the letters. Well, there are five vowels and 26 letters. We just talked about that yesterday. All right, so let's talk about some more difficult stuff. A dartboard is shown in the diagram below, or in other words, to the right. At the center of the circle, and they got two lines that intersect at the center of the circle, and the angle in sector 2 measures 2 pi over 3. What is the probability that the spinner ends up? So 2 pi over 3, that's 120 degrees. If you rounded it. So this would be 120. This would be... 60 then, because they got to form, and if that's 60, this is 60, and if that's 120, this is 120. So the probability, what is the probability spent, ends up in sector 1 or sector 3? So this is the probability of sector 1 or sector 3. Well, no, if you're going to do an or, we're going to talk about this eventually, but if you're going to do an or, we have to add the probability. So that's the probability of a 1 plus the probability of getting a 3. We're going to put those two together. We're going to kind of put them all together because either one would work. Well, the probability of getting a 1, well, if you if this is 60, that would be 60 out of 360, so that would be 1 6. So the probability of getting a 1 is 1 6. The probability of getting a 3 is 1 6. Now, I know it looks like there's 4 here, and you're like, oh, wait a second, Mr. Cross, you don't even know what you're talking about. We're going to like it. That would be just like there's 4, so it's 1 4th. But remember, this area is twice as big, right? If I drew this line in, you know, then all of them are the same width. Four just happens to be twice as big as one. So be careful with that. It doesn't matter how many spaces, it's how big that area is. And this would be two-sixths or one-third. Two-sixths is fine. So a dart is thrown at this, and we want to hit the square. But we want to land in the shaded area. Somehow we want to land in the shaded area, but not in here. So what this is, is probability is, is, is what you want over the total. Well, what I want is the shaded area. I want it to land in the shaded area. 
what the total is, is the entire large square. So the area of the, the area of the shaded region, now to find the area of the shaded region, I gotta do a little subtraction. That's the area, the total area, the total area is 81, minus the area of the inside piece, which is nine. So that would be 72. So the area of the shaded region is 72. So what is the answer to the question? Well, the area of the shaded region is 72, the total area is 81, there is the probability of it landing in the shaded area. I thought I rewrote these. I thought I rewrote these problems, but whatever. Yes, you're not getting this offer. I don't have any candy. So if you roll a one or so, let's just talk about the events. I don't know why I put offer one. Oh, I know. I stole these from Nooms. Ah, Dunkin' Donuts. If you can roll a one or a six, uh, we want to just roll a one. So what's the probability of rolling a one or a six? Well, that's the probability of rolling a one, because it's an or, plus the probability of rolling a six. So it's either one would work. So that's pretty good. So that's the probability of rolling a one is one out of six. The probability of rolling a six is one out of six. So the probability of rolling one or the other is two out of six. If you roll, but the first one has to be a one and the second one has to be a six. So that's this word and. And is much more, much less likely, less likely. Because you need two things to happen, not just one. So what's got to happen? You've got to get the probability of getting a one and then the probability of getting a six. Well, and is multiplication or, or is addition. And is multiplication. So this is the probability of getting a one and the probability of getting a six. So that's one out of six times one out of six, which is really one out of 36. Not so good. So, I want to make sure you understand this. These, the probabilities didn't change for these two things. The event changes. If it's this one, it's an AND event. And if it's an AND event, we have to multiply. So this would be 1, 6 times 1, 6, which is 1 out of 36. If it's an OR event, which is more likely, this is less likely. This is more likely. Because in an and event, it's like, psh, like if I walked in, I said, what's the probability of I walk into a room and I pick a boy or a girl? Okay, everybody's a boy or a girl. I'm going to pick one of you, right? But then I say, okay, what's the probability of picking a boy and a girl? Well, first of all, that's not possible. So uh, whatever. That's a bad example. So anyway, um, 1, 6 plus 1, 6 equals 2, 6. Let me see if I can come up with a better example. What's the probability I pick a boy and somebody that's taller than 5'5"? Five five? Okay, so I can pick all the boys or somebody taller than 5'5". Five five. So I can take all the boys or I can take all the people greater than 5'5". Five five. Another tough, another tough, not a great example. We'll get, I'll get there. If you pull a king or an ace from a standard deck of cards, your entire class will have no homework tonight. Yeah, not going to happen. So what's the pro so this is an or, so that's the probability of a king plus the probability of an ace. So the probability of a king is 4 out of 52. Plus the probability of an ace is 4 out of 52. I'll add those up and I get 8 out of 52. Notice the probabilities didn't change when it was an or because either one would work. I could take this king, 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 or ace, 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 ace. Any one of these eight cards out of the total of 52 would work. Oh, ands are a little bit different. Ands are a little bit different. If you pull two cards out of a standard deck and, here we got an and, the king, we gotta get, we gotta get a king, so that's the probability of king, and then 
the probability of an ace. Well, I also said we're not replacing it. It says without replacement. That's really important. So the probability of a king is 4 out of 52. But if I'm not putting that card back, and of course and means multiplication, there are only 51 cards left, four of which are aces. So this would be 16 out of, if I multiply these together, I get 2652. And you can leave it like that. It's fine. So when you have an and, it's multiplication. When you have an or, it's addition. Um, and you got to think about when they talk about this idea of without replacement. Now, it, with an or event, it doesn't matter. You're just doing one thing. But with an and event, you got to think about it. Complements. Um, Complements. If I'm talking about the complements, it's it's the probability of the of it not happening. So if the if the event is X, then what's the probability of not getting X? But the idea is they have to add to one or in other words one hundred percent. Let's let's take a look at a quick example. For example, if the probability that it will rain is 30%, the complement event to that for that is the probability that it will not rain. Make sense? So if the probability that it will rain is 30%, the probability that it will not rain is 70%. If the probability of having blue eyes is 0.14, then the probability it will not that you don't have blue eyes is 0.86. They have to add up to 1 or 100%. Those are, that's the idea of the complement. If you can pull anything except a heart, so, so the probability of a heart is 1 out of 4. So the probability of not a heart would be three out of four. Overlapping events. Oh my goodness. Overlapping events. Think, think about this. What is the probability of pulling a black card or a face card. So we have two events. We have event A, where this is a black card. And we have event B, where it's a face card. Well, those are overlapping events because they share certain ideas. They share cards. The probability of getting a black, there are actually... 26 black cards. The prob they're probably getting a face card. Well, there's actually 12 face cards. So when I complete this circle right here, when I complete this circle, I better have 12 cards in it. When I complete this circle, I better have 26 cards in it. But we have to think about what's the overlapping event. And the overlapping event or the event that they share is it's a black face card. And there are six black face cards. There's Jack, King, Queen of Clubs and of Spades. So if there are six cards in here, then how many cards would be in here? Well, that means there are 20 other cards. And in this case, there are if there are 12 face cards and six of them are black, then that means there are six that are not black. So what is the probability of pulling a black card or a face card? So you can't count things twice. So it's, 50, uh, what is this, 32 out of 20, oh, excuse me, out of 52. 32 out of, 
Why is my eraser not working? Out of 52. All right. Let, let's take another look at it. If you pull a club or a number less than four. Okay, so the clubs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. There are 13. A number less than four. Okay, so that includes these four. And includes the hearts. One, two, three, four. It includes the spades. One, two, three, four. And it includes the diamonds. I don't know what it is. One, two, three, four. So it includes these 13 plus these 12. But if you just did it the wrong way and you said, okay, that's the probability of getting a clubs, because it's an or event, plus the probability of getting a number less than four, you would say, oh, okay, the probability of getting a clubs is 13 out of 52. The probability of getting a less than four, oh, less than four, sorry. Oh, and said not including an ace. Okay, so let's just, let's make sure we're doing this the right way. So that doesn't include these. Oh, and I put an ace at the end. Put a one at the beginning and an ace at the end. Okay, so not including an ace. So that would mean none of these. So these are all the cards that are less than four, but not including ace. So that would be 13 out of 52. And then there are eight cards that are less than 52, that are less than four. So that would be eight out of 52. But if I added those, I would get 21 out of 52. But the problem is I counted these twice. So you can't do it that way. What you have to do is you have to subtract off the overlapping event, in this case, which is 2 out of 52. So your total answer is, in this case, oh, yeah, your total answer in this case is 19 out of 52. 21 minus 2 is 19. There's your answer. All right, moving on. Let's go. Let's talk about some more examples. Let's go through some examples. What is the probability of rolling doubles on a pair of dice? Now, you've got to think about what that means. Doubles. What could happen? I can get a 1 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a 3 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, a 5 and a 5, or a 6 and a six. So let me think about that. One and one, or two and two, or three and three, or four and four, or five and five, or six and six. So these are and events. I have to get one one. These are or events going down. So the probability of getting a one one is one out of six times one out of six, which is one out of thirty six. Well, wouldn't the probability of getting a 2-2 two, two be 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 6 would be 1 out of 36? So wouldn't each of these be 1 out of 36? Probability of 3s, probability of 4s, probability of 5s, probability of 6s. Well, that, each of these is equally possible, so that would be 6 out of 36. There's actually an easier way of doing that. Really, all it is is the probability. That's, by the way, one six. You know, and then the, the other way is. Nah, I'm not going to do it the other way. That's good. When a fair coin is tossed ten times, it lands heads up for the first seven times. What is the probability that on the eighth toss, the coin will land up tails? They're trying to trick you on this problem. This is kind of like, did I trick you sort of a problem. Every time a coin is tossed, it has an equally likely possibility of heads or tails. Who cares if the first seven were heads? On the next one, it has equally likely a possibility, so the answer is one half. What is the probability that Catherine can draw one card, one card, and it is a heart or a face card. So this is going to be an overlapping event. That's the probability of a heart 
plus the probability of a face card minus the probability of a heart face card. All right, let's do this. The probability of a heart, and I'm going to use them all out of 52. So the probability of heart is 13 out of 52. It's just easier. The probability of a face card is 12 out of 52. There are 12 face cards. And then minus the probability of a heart face card. Well, a heart face card would be 6. Nope. Nope. There are 3 heart face cards. The heart, Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, and King of Hearts. So there's only 3 heart face cards. So minus 3 out of 52. So this would be 25, 22 out of 52. And that's fine. You can leave it just like that. Out of 200 students in a junior class, 12 students are both varsity athletes and on honor roll. So 12 are varsity and on honor roll. 12 varsity and honor roll. 74 juniors who are varsity athletes and 51 juniors who are on honor roll. What is the probability of selecting a random junior that is either a varsity athlete or, so or means we're going to be adding up. So that's the probability of a varsity athlete plus the probability of an honor roll athlete minus the probability of a varsity honor roll student. That's how it is, kids. So the probability of varsity is 74 out of 200. Minus or plus the probability of an honor roll is 51 out of 200. But there are a number of them that were overlapping or in both events. Um, and there were 12 out of 200 that were both varsity athletes and an honor roll. So if I add those up, that's 126. So this would be 140 over 200. Oh, can't add. 75 plus 51 is 125. 125 minus 12 is 113 over 200. All right, moving on. Almost done. Not. What is the probability that the next spin on the spinner will land on blue? Okay, doesn't matter what all the other ones were. The next chance it'll land on blue, there are 95 degrees in blue, so that would be 95 over a total of 360. You don't have to reduce. There it is. Done. Shaded area questions. You have to find the shaded areas first, so we'll do that. We'll find the two areas. The area of the small thing is 36. The area of the big thing is 114. So the area of the shaded region is 114 minus 36, which I believe would be 78. So all the shaded region is 78. You just subtract 114 minus 36. All right. So what is the probability it lands in the shaded region? Well, I, that's the shaded over the total. Well, the shaded is 78, and the total, which is the big box, is 114. Done. What is the probability of rolling a pair of twos or a pair of threes on a pair of fair die? So that's the probability of getting twos or the probability of getting threes. No overlapping events here because they're completely different. Well, the probability of getting twos is one out of 36. We already talked about this. The probability of getting threes is one out of 36. So the probability of getting one or the other is two out of 36 or 1 18th. This is what you call mutually exclusive. Exclusive events. If they don't have any overlapping things, then they're mutually exclusive. They have not mutually exclusive just means they have nothing to do with each other. One does not affect the other. 
What is the probability of selecting five cards from a deck such that you have a royal flush? Ace, king, queen, jack, ten, all in the same suit. Whew. Let's just pick one suit. Let's say, let's say we want a royal flush in spades. I think that's the highest one anyway. So that would be an ace of spades. So that would be the probability of an ace. But I got to get them all. So that's and the probability of a king of spades and the probability of the queen of spades and the probability of the jack of spades and the probability of the ten of spades. So the probability of an ace is one out of 52. The probability of a king of spades is one out of 51. The probability of the queen of spades is one out of 50. Oh, notice the denominator is coming down because I'm pulling five cards. I got to have all five. Probability of jack is one out of 49. And the probability of a 10 is one out of 48. Well, my numerator is easy. That's just one. But my other one, I got to bust a move out here. I got to do 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And I get 311,875,000. So 311,875,200. That's the probability of getting it in spades. But there are four suits. So I could get it in spades. I can get it in clubs, I can get it in diamonds, or I can get it in hearts. So I've got it, so that's one, so really it's one out of 311,800 plus one out of 300 million, you know, plus one out of, plus one out of. So that would really be four out of 311,875,200. All right, moving on. How many of these we got to do? Got... Oh, my dog. Must be somebody mean and nasty walked by. Or a leaf fell somewhere. Actually, the leaves are one of my other one dogs. All right, so let's go. Sorry, I got to pause. All right, we're back. Garrett. Garrett is playing... Blackjack against a computer and he gets dealt an ace. What is the probability that the card the next card is a king, king, or a queen, or a jack, or a ten? So remember, he already got dealt an ace. So one card's gone. He wants a king. That would mean four out of fifty-one. Or we're only getting one other card plus. A queen, four out of 51. Or, because any one of these can happen, a jack, four out of 51. Or a 10, four out of 51. So that's 16 out of 51. Now think about it. That's kind of the, you know, if you really think about it, there are four kings, four queens, four jacks, four tens. So that's 16 cards, and there's 51 cards left. Boom, done. That's it. What is the probability of not rolling a total of seven on a pair of dice? Ooh, man. Let's think about all the ways I can roll a pair of sevens. I can get one and six, two and five, a three and four, but I could also get a four, then a three, a five, then a two, and a one and a six. So there's actually six ways to get a seven. So the probability of not rolling a seven would be 30 out of 36. Anthony is really luckily, luckily, during a magic trick on four successive draws from a standard deck of cards, 
He didn't replace the cards. He drew four jacks. Find the probability of doing this. Okay, well, the probability of getting a jack the first time is four out of 52. The pro and he's got to get another jack, so that's three out of 51. One. And now there's only two jacks left. Two out of 50. And there's only one jack left. One out of 49. Well, the numerator is easy. It's just 4, 12, 24. Nominator is not so easy. 52, 51. Fifty two clear. Fifty two times fifty one times fifty times forty nine equals six million four hundred and ninety seven thousand six million four hundred and ninety seven thousand four hundred. So that's the probability. Twenty four out of that. Not very likely. I don't know why that's staying there, but whatever. Hopefully it'll go away. A standard deck of 52 cards is used to deal one card to each player. What is the probability that a player will be dealt an ace or a spade? Okay. So that's the probability of an ace, which is 4 out of 52. But they're only getting one card, so that's plus. Oh, spade. So the probability of getting a spade. Why is my eraser not working? I don't understand that. It works, but it doesn't work. Um, that would be 13 out of 52. But there is an overlapping event. There's an event that is in common. And that event in common is the ace of spades. So i got to subtract off one there. So that's 17 out of 52 minus one. So that would be 16 out of 52. Moving on up. Jessica has a red pepper. Five strawberries, four bananas, and a cuke in her grocery bag. What is the probability she reaches in and grabs a fruit or something red? So that's the probability of fruit plus the, the probability of red minus the probability of a red fruit. Terrible. Fruit. Let's see. She's got four fruit, four bananas, and five strawberries. So that's nine out of a total of one, six, ten, eleven. Nine out of eleven. That's the probability of pull, pulling a fruit. Probability of pulling something that's red would be one, six. Six out of eleven. But we got to subtract off the probability of getting red fruit, and that would be five out of eleven. So that would be 15 out of 11 minus 5. That would be 10 out of 11. By the way, if you ever get 15 out of 11, you know you did something wrong. Now, in this particular case, I said, what's the probability that she reaches in and grabs fruit or something red? The complement of that would be not fruit, something that's not fruit and not red. So in that case, it's just the cuke. <laughs> it's the complement, which would be 1 out of 11. What is the probability of rolling snake eyes on a pair of dice? Well, that's a 1 out of 6 on the first die times a 1 out of 6 on the second die, which is a 1 out of 36. Done. Justin selects one card from a standard deck. What is the probability to select a king or a heart? So that's the probability of a king plus the probability of a heart minus the probability of the king of hearts. Probability of king is 4 out of 52. The probability of a heart is 13 out of 52. You notice I keep them all out of 52 because it makes things easier. And let's see, king of hearts. Well, that's 1 out of 52. So 17, 16 out of 52. Sounds like a familiar problem. What is the probability that Michaela rolls a fair... Fair six-sided dice what is the probability that Michaela rolls a fair six-sided die and rolls an even number or a perfect square so that's the probability of even 
plus the probability of a perfect square minus the probability of an even perfect square. All right. Well, the probability of even is a 2, 4, or 6. So that's So the probability of even is 3 out of 6. The probability of a perfect square, let me list them all out, 1, 3, 5. Let's see, the perfect squares would be 1 and 4. So the probability of a perfect square is 2 out of 6 minus the probability that's an even perfect square, which would be that 4. So we've got to get rid of 1, so 1 out of 6. So that would be 5 out of 6 minus 1 would be 4 out of 6. All right, last page, children, last page, and then we're done. I lied like a dog. There's two pages left. Hunter, the card shark, selects a card from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability he randomly selects a seven or a black card? So that's the probability of a seven plus the probability of a black card minus the probability of a seven black card card. Well, probably 7 is 4 out of 52. The probability of a black card is 26 out of 52. And minus, now there are two black cards that are 7, so I guess subtract off 2 out of 52. So that would be 28 out of 52. Taylor and Nora play on a softball team. Taylor has 8 hits out of 20 bats. So that's her probability. So Taylor, the probability of getting a hit is 8 out of 20. Nora has 6 hits out of 16 bats, so her probability is 6 out of 16. Based on their past performance, what is the probability that both will get a hit next time at bat? So that's the probability of Taylor getting a hit and the probability of Nora getting a hit. These are mutually exclusive events. If Taylor gets a hit, that's great. doesn't have any effect on Nora. If Nora gets a hit, it has no effect on Taylor. So it makes no difference. So they're mutually exclusive. So the probability of Taylor getting a hit is 8 out of 20 times the probability of Nora getting a hit, which is 6 out of 16. So that's 48 out of 320. Colby's wallet contains four $1 bills. Let me just write this down. Four ones, three fives. That doesn't even look like anything. I don't even know what I wrote there. Four ones, three fives, one ten. Oh, if she randomly removes two bills without replacement, Determine the probability that the total bills will be $15, will be total 15 is greater, wait. Determine whether the probability that the bills will total 15 is greater than the probability that the bills will total 2. So the probability of 15, I would have to get a 10 and a 5, right? So that's the probability of a 10 and the probability of a 5. Well, the probability of a 10 is 1 out of 8. And the probability times the probability of a 5 is 3 out of 7. Because remember, I took one out. So that's 3 out of 56. So the probability of getting 15 is 3 out of 56. Well, not really, because I could also pull a 5 first times the probability of a 10. So I go, I if I, you know, if I pull out a 5 first or a 10 first, then I got to pull out something different. So the probability of pulling a 5 first is 3 out of 8. And then the probability of getting a 10 is 1 out of 7. So the probability of that happening is also 3 out of 56. So the actual probability of getting a $15 is 6 out of 56. Now let's talk about the probability of getting two 1s. Well, that does, you don't have a choice. You have to pull a 1, 
and a 1. Well, the probability of pulling a 1 the first time is 4 out of 8. The probability of getting a 1 the second time is 3 out of 7. That's 12 out of 56. So the probability of getting $2 is greater, much greater. Yanni orders a pizza, and all of a sudden that thing shows up. Um, Chef Kyle randomly selects two toppings to put on the pizza. So Yanni doesn't eat pizza with mushrooms. I'm with you. Determine the probability he'll not eat the pizza. So... How many two choppings we have? We have one, two, three, four, five toppings. So what has to happen? He's gonna tick two randomly. Um he's gotta pick two randomly. He's gonna pick two different toppings. So what has to happen? Well, he needs that's gonna be the probability of not mushrooms and the probability of not mushrooms all right well the probability of not mushrooms is one two three four five four out of five times the probability of not mushrooms the second time well i can only pick from three and there's four toppings left for so that's 12 out of 20 so he'll eat pizza 12 out of 20 times of course unless he's wrestling for a fundraiser at a class, sells 150 raffle tickets for a mall gift certificate and 200 raffle tickets for a book of movie pass. Wait, a fundraiser at a class sells 150 raffle tickets for a mall gift certificate and 200 raffle tickets for a, a book of movie passes. Page buys five raffle tickets for each prize. What is the probability she will win both prizes? Well, if she's got five raffle tickets, the probability she'll win the first prize is five out of 150. And she's got to win both. And the probability that we get the second one is five out of 200. Well, that's 25 out of, let's see, that's 30 and three zeros. 30 out of, 250 out of 30,000. Not very likely. In a swim meet, each heat consists of eight competitors who are randomly assigned lanes from one through eight. What is the probability that a swimmer will be assigned lane four in all three heats? Well, that means it's a probability of lane four plus, oh, not plus, it's got to happen on all of them, plus, times the probability of lane four, times the probability of lane four. Well, probably lane four is the first time is one eighth. They are mutually exclusive. The next time he comes up, because he has equally likely time chance for the next one, he also has a one-eighth chance. And on the last one, a one-eighth chance. Well, that's one out of eight cubed is 512. Last page, promise. And we only have five problems, four problems. The probability that the Cubs will win their first game is one-third. The probability that the Cubs will win their second game is three sevenths. What is the probability the Cubs win both games? Well, that's the probability of win times the probability of win. Both things happen to happen. It's not one or the other, it's both things. So that's one third times three sevenths, which is one seventh. The face of a cube are numbered one through six, hence a die. Hannah tosses the cube once. What is the probability that a prime number or a number divisible by 2 is. So this is the probability of prime plus the probability of even, because that's what divisible by 2 means, minus the probability that it's an even prime. Well, let's talk about primes. If the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or six, I will highlight the prime ones. Two, three, and five. Those are prime. So let's go through this. One, by the way, is by definition not a prime number. So the probability of prime is three out of six. The probability of even one, 
2, 3 is also 3 out of 6. If I added those, it would be 6 out of 6. That would be there would be no way to get a number that wasn't prime or even. That's not true. I got to subtract off the prime that's even, and there's only one of them, too. And there's only one of them ever, one out of six. So if I do this, this is five out of six. So there's a five out of six chance of getting a number that is a prime or an even. Hmm. Oh yeah, the only number that you couldn't, really the only number you couldn't pick is one. In a standard deck of 52 cards, what is the probability that Ariel draws a club or a number less than four? In this case, we're going to include aces. So this is the probability of a club plus the probability of a number less than four minus the probability of a club less than four. Well, the probability of a club is 13 out of 52. The probability of a number less than four, there are four of these for each suit, so that would be 16 out of 52, minus the probability of the, cl the, the clubs that are less than four, and there are four clubs that are less than four. Oops, 52. <coughs> That's 29 minus four, 25 out of 52. Last problem, kids, because the last one's yours. Andrew has a sock drawer that contains nine socks, nine black socks, so nine black socks, five white socks, yeah, they're, and they're not pairs, forgot about that. What is the probability that Andrew randomly selects a matching pair of socks if he selects two, slots, two socks? So what can happen? That's the probability of black and probability of black or the probability of white and the probability of white. So let's talk about these events. So the probability of black and black would be, the probability of black the first time would be 9 out of 14, because there's 14 socks, times the probability of black the second time would be 8 out of 13. That would be 72 out of 196 minus 182, 182. Or I can get white, so that could be 5 out of 14 times 4 out of 13. So that would be 20 out of 182. Add those up, I get 92 out of 182. It's just about a 50-50 chance that you're going to get a matching pair. I'll give you a hint. This has to do with areas. This has to do with areas, and this distance right here is R. So is this distance. This is also R. And when you're done, you're not going to actually have a number. You're going to have maybe an equation. But this one's not that bad. All right, that's it. That's all she wrote. That's it. Oh, my God, it's over. Nice job, 48 minutes. Man, I'm not going to do that much in class. All right, bye. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Donate. Hit the ads if you want to. Thank you, Dunkin' Donuts, for not supporting me again. Appreciate it.